Yo, yo, yo. Stay be the villain. How you feeling? Today's video will be on how I changed my perspective on sex and it changed my life. Once I changed my perspective, my perception on sex, it changed my life. My life has been changed forever. I feel like a new man. <laughs> Real shit. But let's get into it, man. Because I know my fellas got to hear this going into 2024. This is a very, very important message. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe if you feel. Subscribe if you feel it's right. All right? Let's get into it. So, first and foremost, right? This was my ultimate awakening going through my lustful mind. My awakening was... I have done more harm than good when it came to the end result of messing with girls and young ladies. Okay? I've done more harm than good. And I'm a, I'm a man of morals, values, ethics, and principles. That's what I stand on. That's what I live by. That's, that's my code. A lot of y'all have different, you know, motherboards and CPUs that's in your PC. Right? Because we are bigger, more external computers. That's why they call it an external hard drive because it gives you more space. That is what you accumulate from studying. That's what you put into your PC. Right? So that's how you run. That's how you operate. That's how you feel. That's how you get more bandwidth. That's how you get more space. So when I look back and look at the connections and relationships that I've built with girls, in hindsight, it was more bad than good, the outcome. And I didn't like that. So I would be dumb not to fix what I don't like. So I began to study more about relationships and sex. Why is it that I feel more sexually connected to somebody like this instead of somebody like this? Let's break it down some more. Why do I feel more sexually attracted to a young lady who is taking care of her business on top of her business? She don't play when it comes to her morals, ethics, responsibilities, priorities, family, you know, she has, a, she has a long list of things that takes up her mind over a man. Why am I enticed by that? And then I start to realize that I'm a sapiosexual. Right? I am somebody who is really in tune with my intelligence, my energy, and my spiritual sense, which is what I want to feel or I desire to feel from a woman. Why am I more sexually attracted to a woman like that instead of a grown girl, a little girl, who is just all over the place? She loves to be out in the club every weekend looking for the niggas, looking for more attention, looking for niggas to buy her drinks, take her out, wanting a new boyfriend, but knowing damn well she can't handle it. She getting, she getting passed around to the guys. Looking for the weed. I'm not attracted to that at all. So I looked at the results. Right? This is what y'all need to do. You need to look at the results. Because yes, there's always going to be good moments in bad results. There's always going to be good. But I wasn't satisfied. I wasn't content with how far it took until it got bad. Like the buildup. I, I wasn't satisfied with that. Because I don't really play that. I used to. I don't really play them games on if I could have did this, if I should have did this. Well, if I would have said this differently, then I would have got a different response, a different outcome. Right? I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? This, this life is not moment of truth. You know, I did it in the moment. 
This is what I felt I should do. This is how I felt because I was defensive, because I was, you know, too emotional in that moment. This is how I responded. Well, now, looking in hindsight, I don't play them games. So this is the first thing that I realized, y'all. I realized that sex, all sex stands for is sexual energy exchange. That's what the word means. You are having an energy exchange with a woman. Do you know the baggage, the heartbreak, the pain, the turmoil, the resentment that another person can hold in their body? This is, this is what overrides them. I'm going to go back to the PC analogy. This is like you not having enough RAM, you not having enough gigabytes, and you are just downloading so many heavy games that your PC cannot handle. You think it can because you bought it for $1,000, but you didn't know that the case alone costs $300. The motherboard costs $300. That's $600 off top. Graphics card, CPU, RAM, there's so many different levels that make you up. So, you as a man, us as men, we give, right? You know, you know the saying, we dropping off some, right? When we drop things off, we don't really care about what to do with it. We don't care. We just... And just walking out. So us as men, biologically, we give. We give. And give and give and give. This is why we want to provide, protect, maintain, and sustain. Because we give because we need to and we want to. Biologically, we want to take care of our tribe. We want to take care of our lions and the lions den. That's what we call to do. If we are useless, then we are broke. If we can't be of use, we are broke as men. You can't be worked with. So what are you good for? So all of that baggage that we are giving, when you are just giving your energy to any and every girl you see, you're setting yourself back every time. You setting yourself back every single time you engage in activities like that. I'm not saying not to. I'm saying be aware. If you know better, you have the ability to do better. Don't mean you will. Don't mean you will. And that's with anybody. No matter how conscious, how aware, how spiritually inclined, how religious you are, how much you go to church on the weekend, how much you party and then you go to church, how much you smoke, how much you don't smoke, how much you drink, how much you don't drink. It don't matter about none of that. You have the ability to do better now. What you going to do? You still got to make a choice. So women, naturally, what do they do? They take. Hence why they are great nurturers. Women, I'm saying, not the modern girls, not them. Okay, they, they are not real people. <laughs> Women know how to build things. You give a woman an open apartment, an open crib, she will know exactly. Women's brains are like Tetris. Women, they know exactly what to put, what type of color scheme they want, how they want their bathroom to look. They want to color coordinate the bathroom. They want to color coordinate the closet with the clothes and the shoes, the black shoes right here for the fall time, for in the boots. Right? They, they, yo. It's amazing. Women nurture things. Women take care. Yo, women birth people. <laughs> like, that, that should give you all you need. So women know how to take. Sidebar, love is not about what you can give. It's about what you can take. That is really how you substantially show your love for somebody. How much you can take. I can't take it no more. I'm done with this shit. You too toxic. You too. 
Huh. And she still stay with your monkey ass. She still stay with your musty, dirty, black ass. She still stay with you, boy. And you always thought you was going to have her around until you didn't. Now you sick. Hmm. Get well soon, partner. Because now you hurting. Of course, she hurting too. But she been knew who you were since the jump. She been knew what type of dude she was changing from the beginning. And she still had hope. All the fuck shit you was doing. All the toxic shit you was giving her, spewing on to her. How impressionable you were. Learning all this dumbass shit. And she still catered to your dumb ass. So when I realized that sex is an energy exchange, I thought about that exchange completely different because it's like money. You're not just going to give your money away to anybody, especially if you worked hard for it. If you put a lot of mental enterprise, physical enterprise, emotional Spiritual enterprise into gaining this money, gaining this currency, gaining that power. You're not just going to give it away to anybody. Right? And when I realized that, it changed my life. It changed my life completely. I started to watch how the girls who used to always go out to the club, I used to watch how they act. I used to watch their stories differently. I used to peep them out. How they used to walk, what they used to wear differently. Not judging, not judging. Observe. It's two different things. Being judgmental and observant is two different things. So that's one that changed my life. The second thing that changed my life. Hurt people. Want to find other people to hurt. Mm. I'm going to say it again. Hurt people want to find other people to hurt. Hmm. On one end of the spectrum, that's what I always say. Who can you blame? Because whoever they got it from, got it from somebody else. Who got it from somebody else. Who learned it from them. Who learned it from somebody else. Who got it taught from somebody else to so at one point at what point can you be whatever age who can you blame who can you hold accountable what you gonna point fingers at the grandpa you gonna point fingers at the uncle who raised them the auntie who raised her what what you gonna do you have to make that decision it has to flow within you as they say, this game ain't on me, baby. It's in me. Straight up. So how are you going to respond? What option, what choice are you going to make? Because your life depends on it. Your future depends on it. So tell a quick story. I had a friend when I was in grade school. So first grade, second grade. He was one of the biggest dudes in my grade. One of the biggest dudes. And his way of getting attention and getting people to befriend him was to bully him. Now, I was the quiet but outspoken, honest dude at the same time. JB, how could you be all of those in one? I'm not sure. I just did what I was called to do. <laughs> so... Once we were out at recess playing football, it was cold. We was playing football at recess and he pushed somebody. Now we're not in the grass. We're not in the grass. We're on cement because there's basketball goals too in, in the courtyard. And I was the quarterback. He blatantly pushed my teammate on the ground. I'll never forget this. Teachers were out there with their whistles and everything. I'll never forget this. He pushed him on the ground. I stopped the whole game. I said, God, yo, yo, stop. Don't do that. Apologize right now. 
And I said that, I said that to the bully that pushed Buddy on the ground. Apologize right now. We, we can't keep playing if you don't apologize right now. I said that. What age are you at first grade? Eight? Seven? That's just what my heart told me to say. And over time, he respected me because I was the only one to stand up to him and I was the only one to voice what everybody, everybody else he bullied really wanted to say to him. I was the only one to do it. Lil Jaden, I was the only one to do it. And fast forward, we became friends. He invited me to his house. Well, friends, so I thought, right? <laughs> he invited me to his house. We went to, we went to each other's games, baseball, football, basketball games all the time. You know, he had a three-story mansion, you know, pool in the backyard, a basketball court. We was, he had all the jerseys, all of the, the Paul Pierce shoes, the Nike shoes when, you know, the Paul Pierce shoes was crazy. Yo, like, we was for real. When his parents and his mom would come pick him up, they'd pick me up too. we go, he had a, an older sister, and it, it was just amazing, right? And I realized at a very young age that hurt people need to find other people to hurt. And subconsciously, they don't know what they're doing until they know what they're doing, <laughs> until they know until they figure out the severity of the situation, they don't know what they're doing, right? Did you know what you were doing when you first rode your bike? Rode a scooter? Was swimming, you know, first learn how to swim? Drive a car? Tie your shoes? Did, you didn't know. But you kept doing it. Until somebody told you that that's not Correct. That's not right. And then you change things up. Okay, well, how do I swim the right way to, you know, get from this side of the pool to that side? You have to go underwater, kick your feet, and do it at the same time. Hmm. And you do exactly what they say, and you get from one side of the pool to the other. <laughs> this is how you process and assimilate data. This is how you operate. So... Once I realized that hurt people want to find other people to hurt, I made a correlation to sex. Okay, if somebody, if a woman is sexually accessible, she is easily sexually accessible with her mind and her body, she is open to all spirits. She could think all of these spirits are angels, but they're really demons. They're in disguise. And she's taking them because she believes that these are all angels that's guiding her and helping her. But they're demons. And she has all of this baggage. So she, beca she, she begins to be resentful. She begins to be revengeful, deceitful, a liar, a cheater, toxic. She, she builds those same habits that she didn't want in her body to begin with. This is why you can see these modern girls on TikTok and social media, on Instagram, do the same things that they said they would never tolerate. They're doing the same things, but to other grown dudes who have no wherewithal. They have no awareness. And their only debate is, I got it done to me. So y'all say fuck bitches, I say fuck niggas. All I want is a money to get flown out. They have a whole song for it. Get that head, get that bread, then leave. Peace out. And it got viral. That's, that's, that should show you a lot right there. Demonic spirits just entering their body completely. That should show you right there. So once I made that correlation, it changed my life, y'all. It changed my life for real. And every single day, I looked at how many people in this world are really in pain. 
Because it shows. You don't like you, yo. <laughs> Woo! A lot of times you you don't even have to ask anybody how they're doing. They'll tell you. Just sit there and cock your head to the side, nod, and maybe ask a little question or two. They will tell you by their mannerisms, actions, observations, how they view men, how they view Cheesecake Factory, how they view marriage, how they view having kids. How they view moving in with somebody of the opposite sex? How... They're going to tell you. But you got to believe them. If you want to make that constructive choice, you got to believe them. Because they're telling you. Are you going to be blind to what you hear? What? Your senses don't work now? Your senses are broke? Huh. Well, I can't want it for you more than you want it for yourself. I can't. Because I'm not withholding that type of energy in my heart no more. I've been there, done that. I'm not withholding more energy for you to elevate than you have for yourself. Because then I'm overexerting wasteless energy. So how about this? I'm going to just transform it and transmutate it into myself. That's what I'm going to do. Because, y'all, you have to start feeling you have to start feeling somewhat guilty but not like survival's guilt like you are coming into awareness now and it's like oh man I could have helped all these people shit well not that type of guilt the guilt for them that they are in a position to hate women to hate men, to constantly yell and say, fuck bitches, just use them for what they got, just like the same way they used us, do this, that, and the third. You know, you got you to gotta feel bad for them. You got to feel bad for them because the projection of their lens that's coming out to the world, mm, you will be single for life. No woman is putting up with that shit. No woman is putting up with that dumbass shit. And a lot of them be 25 and up with these lame-ass mentalities that they only got from somebody else being in pain. So it's a, it's a pain train. <laughs> it's a whole pain train, y'all. Whole pain train. And they love being on it. And the last thing that changed my perspective on sex, that changed my life completely, the last thing is women are sacred. Hear me clearly. Women are sacred, and so are their hearts. Women are sacred, y'all. They have a sacred solar plexus, sacral chakra energy about them that is so healing. It is so rejuvenating. It's so sexy. Because y'all know how we get. Most men are extremely lustful and they just think first with their lower head instead of their main head. <laughs> and it's kind of ironic not to get too you know, explicit here, but it's kind of ironic that with your head down there, we have two testicles. But they all embody the same thing once it is released. The same thing is included in both of those testicles when released. In this head, we have our less left hemisphere of our brain, subconscious mind, and our right hemisphere of our brain, our conscious mind. There are so many different navigations on the left side that is disconnected from the right side. But once we can get those in unison, ooh, you are powerful. Hence why from your testicles, you can create a whole person, a whole person in this world who has the ability to change lives. 
to change the world. Break generational curses with your sack. With your nut sack, you can do it. And then you have the woman that's giving birth to that, having that person live with her for nine months, grow, evolve, kick, punch, scream, yell, morph into And now that I'm explaining it, do y'all get how it changed my life like this? Do y'all get it? This is how passionate I am about this shit. This is why these red pill creators will never, ever, ever, ever understand the depth of this shit. They, they won't. They're too narrow. They're too dull. They're too narrow and too dull. And on top of that, I'm living like this. I'm living this way. I am living this way. My energy is sacred. You hear me? My energy is precious. I treat my energy like I treat my money. Even with family. Even with my mother. My... I go where I'm needed. Not where I'm wanted. Once I did what I had to do, I said what I had to say. I said what I had to say. <laughs> The energy just gets so vibrational. I said what I said, and now I'm out. I'm out. I'm here for a purpose. I'm here by design. I'm here for a purpose. I'm not going to play with that. I'm not going to fuck around with that purpose. Because I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do on purpose. I'm going to make the conscious decision... Through my subconscious that I have trained myself to make the conscious decision to do what I love and care about, which is my purpose, on purpose. So once I found out how important a woman's heart is, oh my goodness, a woman, a woman. If y'all haven't seen my video on the difference between grown women and grown ass girls, watch that video. Watch that video. That's a great video. It needs to be addressed. It needs to be addressed, y'all. I'm telling you. <laughs> treat your sex like you treat your money. Because not to play these games as well, but there can be slip-ups. Do you really want to have a scare with a woolly mammoth ass bitch just because you're trying to have a nice time? You're trying to have a good experience under your belt? You're trying to brag to your homeboys? You're trying to brag to a whole bunch of niggas that you knocked that down? Really? You can get your STD from this woolly mammoth. From this scary ass Sacagawea ass. This damn Sasquatch ass. <laughs> you can get your STD. You can get your disease. Chlamydia, gonorrhea. She could become. I'm not trying to curse nobody here. Or. You're safe. Do you want to play with them odds? I would much rather want to play with them odds with a woman who I really got to know mentally, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically. I want to get to know a woman like that and then have sex with her and we knock it off and we do what we do. See, when you get into this type of bag, yeah, you better start living on purpose. On purpose. Yeah, you better start living like this or else. Do it, do it if you dare. Do it if you dare. Watch the results. Like I said in the beginning, I watched the results of how bad the results were. I met a lot of great women. They are now in relationships. Shit, some of them married. Some of them got kids already. I'm not saying I was supposed to be the one to lock them down, but they were great women. They were great women. They were very nurturing, awesome and 
the ship sailed. The ship sailed. Because I fucked it up. Being too cool. <laughs> Trying to impress too many dudes. Like they give a fuck. I got, I've been had a mouthpiece. I've been had game. I don't got to prove to y'all why I got game. <laughs> I'm proving to myself. Proving to myself. To get better. To not be so lustful. I'm the prize. So I'm going to choose wisely. That's what I'm going to do. If I am the trophy holder... I am the world record setter. I hold all the cards. So I'm a choose, I'm the dealer. I'm gonna choose which cards I give you, how many. I like you, I'm gonna give you two extra. I could I could do that. Cause I got the choice. You got the power to choose. You got the power to choose. Focus on what matters.